name Brennan Boyette. I'm from Oakland, California. My mother and my father both rejected me. My mother was, my mother ran with the Hells Angels and was also a male female. My father was a bum and a drunk. I stayed with my mother until I was seven years old. Then I got shipped out until I was, uh, I got shipped out to Atlanta, Georgia, stayed with my father. And on my birthday at seven years old, my father told me, I'm gonna go get you a present. And then my father, as my father went to go get me a present, and he walked out, and I ain't never seen him since till a couple of years ago. I grew up in the world. I, I, I grew up, and, and I met a friend that I, as I was old there with my father. And his name was Wayne, and his father took me in at seven years old. His father ran with a man out of South Central California named Chucky Williams. They raised me till I was seven, till I was 15 years old. By the age of 11, I finally proved of myself that I was able to, 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 to I, was, I was able to be a part of a family. I had to prove to myself because not one, for, for, for one, I was a Caucasian, I was a white boy. My whole life in Oakland, I had to prove myself because I didn't fit in with the S.A. and I didn't fit in with the brothers. So all my life, I had to fight every single day. So I'm sitting there, I'm, 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 I'm with Wayne's father, and they raising me. They, they, they raised me up. By the time me and Wayne is 15 years old, we are out on, we are out on our own. We got our own place. We, we, we out there, we, 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 trying to, we trying to make a name of ourselves. Our dream wasn't to be a doctor. Our dream wasn't to be a, a lawyer or a football player or an NFL player or NBA player. Our dream was to be one of the biggest dope dealers this world had ever seen. Our dream, we wanted to be like Larry Hoover, like Frank Lucas, like Mickey. We wanted to be bigger than they all was. I catch a charge. I do two years. Wayne catch a charge and he's up, he, he ends up going to a, he, he ends up going to a team challenge. As he in Team Challenge, he, I get out, I go pick him up, and he gets out of Team Challenge, and I go pick him up. Our whole life, no one never came to preach to us. No one never came to tell us about God. No one never came to my face and said, man, God loves you, got a plan for you. So in my world, it was like, how am I going to serve a God if you're too scared to come up to me and tell me about him? So my whole life, I never knew. My, my whole life, when it came to God, it wasn't about that. I didn't grow up in Bible school. I didn't grow up learning the scriptures. I didn't grow up to be, be, be being taught scripture. I learned up how many grams make up an ounce. How many ounces make up a pound. How can I flip a pound to a key? So I go pick up Wayne, and Wayne starts preaching to me. He starts telling me about God and how God changed his life. He starts telling me that, man, God... God can save you, man. I ain't trying to hear none of it. I get a call. Because as Wayne was in the team challenge, he was writing letters to his father, writing letters to his people saying he renouncing the game. I get, a I, I get a call to come pick up a package as I'm, pick as I'm driving Wayne from team challenge home. And I go pick up the package and we, get, we end up getting ambushed at the same time we got set up. Same set, same gang, people that we was loyal to, people that we did dirt for. They put a gun to the back of my head, they put six to Wayne's head. And they asked Wayne, they said, what do you claim? What do you claim? Wayne took his flag and he threw it on the ground. He took his gun and he put it on the ground. And he said, the only thing I claim is Jesus Christ. They shot him on the spot. He took 12 to the head. I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm sitting there, I'm confused. He just got done preaching me, telling me about, telling me about God, and next thing you know, he's dead. The same people that was family. I've been rejected by my mother, I've been re rejected by my father, and now I'm being rejected by a, a so-called thing they call family? Yeah. Something that I, something that I, that, 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 that I, I, I bled for. Yeah. 
It was just more than a color to me. It meant something differently. It was just more than a game. It was a family. Make a long story short, somehow I end up in the service. And Eddie James is playing. I end up somehow, God end up making the connection between me and Eddie. I end up coming on the road with him. But it still wasn't easy. I was in and out. I didn't know there was really a God. This God was really real. Because I'm, I'm not going to fake nothing. And so, and so for six years, for six years, I'm in and out, in and out, in and out. 2010, I told Eddie, I'm done. Done with God, done with this. This is, man, I'm done. February 6, 2011, it's me and my son. I'm in a trap house serving crack. I got my son in the back. Trap house and I'm getting shot up. The trap house and I'm getting shot up and my son's in the back. And I grab my son, not even thinking about it. Grab my son. I, I'm in the car, we're driving, and my son is crying. And I'm like, shut up, shut up. And he says, Daddy, I'm scared. I'm just scared, Daddy, I'm scared. And from that moment, I realized that I wasn't just living for myself anymore. I gave up everything because I made up in my mind that I was done with this world. And he's been calling me, calling me in and out for six years. Every time he's been calling me, every time he called me, as he's calling me, I just don't happen to be getting shot at. Bullets flying everywhere. He's in the yard. I'm like, I'm just getting shot at. But it had to be real for me. I still had to, I, I, I still had to figure it out myself. And I asked Andy, I said, out of all these years. Why, why have you not just gave up on me, man? I'm unsavable, okay? I, can't, I, I just ain't going to get it. And he said, he said if, if I give up on you, I'm giving the false identity of who the real father is. <laughs> so I'm in a room. I'm in a room by myself, no Eddie, no music, no nothing. I'm listening to, I've been hearing for six years how people been getting set free. God said, I'm free. God said, I'm free. In one night, in one day, and I'm like, well, why am I so different? Because God ain't set me free in one day. God ain't set me free just like that. It was a process. It was a journey. And I sat in that duplication room, and I was duplicating CDs. And I said, God, and I started cursing God. And I said, God, are you real or are you not? I, God, if I don't have an encounter right now, then I'm done. And I ain't just talking about done just by staying in the middle. No, I'm either one way or I'm, or I'm the other. And finally, I got on my knees and I started crying. And I said, God, I just want to feel you. I became so desperate that I said, God, if I don't leave, if you don't show me, God, I'm dead. I'm done. And finally, that moment, that, that moment that I'm on my knees, I'm crying. I'm just like, God, I just want to feel your touch. I just want to know if you're really real for myself. I don't want to hear it from somebody else's mouth or what God did for somebody else. I want my own story from what you did for me. And so I'm on my knees, next thing you know, God comes in and he touches me, man. And it wasn't nothing that it was, it wasn't no goosebumps or chill bumps. Just because the air condition get on in your heart and you get cold. And then you blame and thinking that's the Holy Ghost. But it had to be something real. And how I knew it was so real. Because for the first time in my life, I, had, I, never, I never had so much peace in mind. For the first time in my life, I never, I never felt peace. 
For the first time in my life, I ain't had to look over my back. For the first time in my life, I felt protected. For the first time in my life, I felt like somebody actually had my back. For the first time in my life, I felt like God really loved me. That God was a father for the first time in my life. That's when I know there was a God. That's when I know that there is a God. That's how I know that God loves you. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter where you, what you've done. But if you truly give it all, and you're truly desperate enough to seek it,